and know that I am God. What that means is whatever things make you anxious, calm your nerves. Yes, <laughs> you come to Oga to be sedated by the God's word. So every form of anxiety. <sighs> then you see his act. You will begin to do things with ease. You have not met with God until you begin to do things with ease. You have not met with God until you begin to do things with ease. And his soul shall dwell with ease. What more is he that feared the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease. These are signs that God is at work in a man's life. Doing things with ease. And then Musa was I, I was going to the Facebook and I saw a comment. He said, from somebody out there, he said, your delivery is with ease. That's God at work. You run your business with ease. Amen. You come here for anxiety to be removed in your life. Anxiety. Be anxious for nothing. Sit down. What man is he that feared the Lord? Him. Shall he teach? So God has been teaching me, sir. Now you see, what guy is a school? I'm a student here, sir. I keep telling you whoever stands here to speak, I'm a student. A mysterious ground. We don't showcase, showcase people here. It's God, the Lord. A minister of the sanctuary, of the true tabernacle. We don't fake things here. Which the Lord preached and not man. He said in Psalm 119, verse 160, Thy word is true from the beginning. True tabernacle. Marketing true word. Thy word is true from the beginning. And every one of thy righteous judgment endure forever. Whatever statement of scripture that is fired into your spirit, man, works and is forever here. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart. Standard in awe of thy word. That's what we do at Woka. No matter what is happening, our heart is rooted to the word. That's why there is no cardiovascular failure here. Princes have persecuted me without a cause. 
Whatever evil thing that is coming here without a cause, I have an answer today. But my heart standing in awe of thy word. I rejoice at thy word as one that finds great boy. I hate an abode lie, but the Lord do I love. Seven times a day we will like praise him because of the righteous judgment. I want to see, I want to see the, the celebration that the psalmist is revolving around God's word. Everything God's word. Everything God's word. That's what we guys. Say, Lord, I've heard your salvation and done that commandment. My soul have kept thy testimony, for I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precept and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. Let my cry come before thee. Give me an understanding according to thy word. Let my supplication come before thee. Oh, deliver me according to thy word. Just everything the word. Let me tell you why you should be so for everyone here. Because you are a stranger here on earth. This is not your home. Psalm 119, verse 19. I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not your commandments from me. Don't make here your home. So if this place, you are a stranger to this place, then you need your thoughts, your words to be heavenly words. That's why hide not my commandments. So anything you are thinking about is your home. Whatever you are talking about is your home. <laughs> That's how to dominate this art. So when you see me open my mouth, what I'm talking about is my home. Not earthly things. So that I won't partake of earthly things. That's why sickness is strange to me. I'm a stranger. So how can I be partaking of what is here? Big time. It is strange to this man, messenger. Stagnation is strange to this man. After this service, when you live here, sickness shall be strange to you. Anisaka, Parusa, Kaleba, Kura, Taliaga. You can't be partaking of what this world is partaking as a stranger. Anytime I travel out of this place, wherever I am, sir. Wherever those places are, don't entice me. I'm always thinking about where I'm coming from. Talking about where I'm coming from. That should be your lifestyle. That's why he has given you. Let, show me your commandment. Hide not your commandment. So each time you open your mouth, you are thinking about home. Thinking about home. That's how to dominate this world. I have over the years built my spiritual capacity to be word filled thoughts. Word filled words. This mouth. Only talking about heaven. I'm a stranger here. I don't talk what they talk. I don't think what they think. That's how be in heavenly places here on earth. The service has finished. <laughs> Let me go back over it one more time and replay Psalm 119. Just sit calm. Now that your nerves are sedated by God's word, be calm. No anxiety of any kind. When you live here today, sickness shall be strange for you. Barrenness shall be strange for you. Oh God of heaven. 
you won't be thinking what they are thinking. Amen. You won't be talking what they are talking. Amen. Hide not thy commandments from me. I am a stranger here. Yes. What that means is, I will keep speaking your word. I'm from heaven. Speaking heavenly language. Having heavenly thoughts. My ways are not your ways. That's his word. And my thoughts are not your So heavenly thoughts. Here or not. Makes you to dominate. Verse 160. Thy word is true from the beginning. So whatever thing is not reflecting the word of God in your life is lie. Yes, whatever you are seeing around you that is contrary to what God has said is a lie. And it will come to pass. Only God's word will stick in your life. Amen. Princes have persecuted me but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. I rejoice at thy word as one that found a great spoil. No substance, no possession. The word that sanctifies is superior to material security. I rejoice at thy word. <laughs> That's one that found a great spoil. Uh, some people have great spoil, but you see you are rejoicing at his word. As one that found a grace for. That means the sanctified world is superior to material security. Yes, when you come here, we'll point you to what will last in your life. I hate and abhor lying, but thy Lord do I love. Seven times a day will I praise you because of thy righteous judgment. I have hoped in thy salvation and done thy commandments. My soul had kept thy testimonies for I love them exceedingly. Sir. That's my posture. Everything, sir, to me is dung. I'm telling you something, sir. Over this years, I've been romancing with the world. It's so romantic to me, sir the word of God. I have kept thy precept and thy testimonies for all my ways are before him. All of There is no little thing about it that is, escapes him. Forget it. No little thing that escapes him. All my ways are before thee. Let my cry come before thee. Give me understanding according to thy word. That's what I'm enjoying, sir. Let my supplication come before thee. Oh, deliver me according to that. So I saw deliverance last year according to his word. When, when I stood still, suddenly the captivity just turned. When the Lord turned again, the captivity. Let my supplication come before thee. Oh, deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me. It is revelation that engenders praise. The reason why you are not praising God is you don't have access. When thou hast taught me, it is what? Revelation that engenders praise. No plenty. You can be in the midst of scarcity and then you are just <laughs> celebrating. That's why we call it celebrant praisers. They have access to the deep things of God. The quality of your life is tied to the captivating insight from scriptures. The quality of your life is tied to the captivating insight from scriptures. Insight from scripture creates ripple effects in a man's life. Big times. Everything coming out of my lips is not coined. It has been taught by God, sir. My lips shall utter prevent thou hast taught me thy statutes. And my tongue shall speak of thy commandment, for they are all righteous. 
So when I open my mouth, nothing else up. Just the world become a stranger. So sickness is strange to me. Huh? I keep speaking the word. My tongue shall speak off. Thy word. For all that commandment. Ah, righteousness. Let thy hand help me. For I have chosen thy precept. Now these are deliberate acts. For I have chosen. No, that uh, it comes now. You. That's what sanctification is. A life of taking responsibility. Not a gift that you receive. All the bounties of heaven Jesus paid for demands you taking responsibility. It's a responsibility you take. It's not a gift you receive. Sanctification is what? So, so, that man is a, is a gifted holy man. There's nothing like that. God, this is a talented holy man. No. It's a responsibility you take. We'll get there. One more time. For everyone seated under the sound of my voice this morning, when you leave here, short doors shall be strange to you. Amen. You won't be experiencing what others are experiencing. Amen. You will do this with ease. Amen. His soul shall dwell at ease and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is to them that fear him, for he will show them his covenant. You are just being shown things uh, with ease. With ease. I'm enjoying my marital life, driving it with ease. So everything I'm driving in my life is with ease. Because I'm a stranger here on earth. We don't struggle here. He said, let my soul live and it will praise thee and let thy judgment help me. I have gone as well like a lost as a lost sheep. Seek thy servant for I do not forget thy commandment. So you can forget everything but don't forget God's word. You have remembered everything except God's word. That's why things are not working for you. After this service, things will begin to work for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. One more time. Sickness. Lack. Shall be strange to you. Amen. You shall be a stranger to the evils of this life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. So always fill your thoughts with his commandment. Speak your home language here on earth. I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I see everyone seated under the sound of my voice living in heavenly places here on earth. Amen. Stand to your feet, lift up your hands to heaven, giving thanks. Bless his holy name. Say after me, I am a stranger on the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. That's what you need here on earth, nothing else. You are about to be revealed to your world. Amen. Whatever thing has been far fetched to you, the Lord God of heaven will bring it to you by his word today. Amen.
all eyes shall be on you. In Jesus' mighty name. I would like us in a moment to just celebrate him in praise. Hallelujah. Uh, praise is not theoretical. Praise is practical. And I told you about the garment of praise. Don't use your garment you use when you are 15 years old now. You have outgrown it. So you must increase the size of your garment. Until you begin to see praise as a garment. You won't maneuver, inside, you won't maneuver well inside that garment. Some of you, the garment is so tight. You have outgrown it. That's why you don't move. When it is praise time, it's holding you. It's so skimpy. Uh, I wear David's order of garment. Bogus. Uh, to my leg anyhow. It's a new day for you. Let's dig it in praise. Oh, yeah. I want you to watch two things in your life. Your praise life and your life of sanctification. These two things. Sit down. I want you to keep in your praise life and then watch holiness, godliness, righteousness. Don't exchange it for anything. I said last Sunday, whatever threatens your sanctity, sanctification, threatens your Christian life. So also your praise life. Why must you praise God? He made you. It is he that has made us, not we ourselves. He made everything to give him glory. He has every right to demand adoration from his creature. He has every right to demand adoration from his, scripture, uh, from his creatures. He has every right to demand adoration from his creatures. So he said, let the people praise you, O oh God. For these people have a form for myself. They shall show for my praise. So he said, most. Praise you on empty stomach. There is no string attached to it. No reason attached. Why? He made you. And he who has made you has every right to demand adoration from his creature. Inevitably, ultimately, ultimately, everyone will praise him. Willingly or unwillingly, in life or in death. So make your choice. Nakata, Karo, Bato, Salata, Ta, Bakuna, Talia, Gades. Forget about those who are opposing. Inevitably, he will be glorified by every individual, willingly or unwillingly, in life or in death. So make your choice. What happens if you don't praise you? He judges those who don't. He judges those who don't. Number two, he abandons them. May God not turn his back on you. These two things is what happens to anyone who does not happen to the instruction of let, let them praise me. He judges them. Two, he abandons them. God will not abandon you. So watch your praise life. Many people don't know what praise carries. That's why they don't praise God. Praise can do anything. Praise can do one thing as easily as it can do another. Healing, cheap, deliverance, just name it. Praise can do one thing as easily as it can do another. And the power of praise does not diminish, so it doesn't need replenishing. 
there are no bounds to the power of praise. That's how powerful praise is. Hear this. Oh God of heaven. God has given me good understanding of praise, sir. That all my moments are interspersed with praise. You know, life is full of weights. You keep waiting. You say, wait, wait. You go to a place, office, wait, wait, wait. Life is full of weights. So that waiting period, praise. So when you go to an office and say, wait, that waiting period, praise. Wherever you go and they say to you, wait, praise. God is saying, praise me. You are waiting for somebody to come and uh, tell you that I want to marry you. Praise. Yes, praise can do anything. It can do one thing as easily as another. So when you sit down, somebody stands there and share a testimony in your heart. Praise God. The power of praise is constant. It does not diminish. Or it cannot be replenished. It is those things that diminish. That's why you replenish. You replenish your water supply. But it's not. It's constant. That's how powerful. You know why it's so? God endures praise. Is it Cyprus? I want to tantalize your mind before we enter into the world today. So that you catch this thing. Not that when you come to church, you praise you. No. You need to know the dangerous praise I do in my bedroom. In the toilet. No one will come here. Praise the Lord. Hear this. Praise can make everything serve you. Listen to this. What is intended to defeat you can be turned to victory with praise. Praise can make everything serve you. Richard. Here, we teach you how to live. My enemies have been serving me, sir. Via the instrumentality of praise. People who don't know have been serving me. Praise can make everything serve you. Just as an airplane on a top tarmac always rises against the wind. Not with the wind. Against the wind. So praise can make opposition send you up, not down. Neko! <laughs> Select the high praises. It takes you up. Big time, sir. I'm communicating to you things I've tested that it's working for me 24 7. Just as an airplane on a tarmac uh, goes against the wind to go up. So praise can make opposition send you up and not down. Let the high priestess of God be in their mouth and the two angels hold in their hand to execute judgment upon the hidden and push upon the this honor have all his saints. Can you see that? So you can be up, sir. Your business can be up. We do this with understanding here. He said, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Moses is terrible. He will subdue the people and nations under us. He will choose our inheritance for us. God has gone up with a shout, with the voice of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. So what do I think? God is king of all the earth. Sing your praises with understanding. Whatever happens, praise can make something good come out of it. Whatever negative thing happens, praise can make something good out of whatever happens. That's how I've been turning negative things start to become so positive in my life. Through this mystery, 
Everything is in prison. Jesus took the worst thing that happened to him to go to the cross and then turn it into the best thing that has happened to man. Heaven. Hush. So when I see a bad scenario, uh, I know what to do. I laugh at it because it's going to be turned. It's pressure. When the Lord turned again the captivity, can you see that? That's a picture that is not palatable. Jesus took the worst thing that happened to him. That's crucifixion, cross. And turn it into the best thing that has happened to you and I. Heaven. Cross means sin. And then he turned it into the healing of sin. <laughs> what was sin was turned into the healing of sin. So what is life can be turned into plenty. What is barrenness can be fruitful. That's why I jump here, sir. Can I tell you this? I've not seen the picture of who we are here. It is prayer that show you uh, the picture of your real person. <laughs> Gloria. <laughs> that was why I made you to laugh that day. <sighs> why would you look at the things that are seen? Why? Because God is in prayer showing you another picture. This is why he said rejoice evermore. I don't know why God is stretching this topic because uh, it's not the topic for today. It's for somebody here now. Amen. 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 The cross was hate. Yet, praise turns it into a revelation of love. Cross means hate. And then, Praise turn into a revelation of love. It's on the cross that you saw the love of God. <laughs> the remaining days of this year, you will be celebrating. Amen. The cross was man at his worst. And then God turned it to God at his redemptive best. That's why I said there's no ugly situation I see that doubles me. When it's about to be turned. This month we are in. Everything contrary to the will of God in your life shall be turned. The best of you shall come out. Watch it and see. In your seated position, lift up your hands and bless him. <laughs> God is going to disappoint the expectation of the enemies of your life. They will look at your life and be grieved. This morning we shall be looking at the subject matter. The word sanctifies. That was it. <laughs> the word sanctifies. Let me ask everyone seated here. What do people see when they look at your life? At Woga, you are word made. And when you are word made, you are really made. What do people see when they look at your life? What do people say when they talk about you?
people observe you, sir. The moment you step up, people are watching. They are seeing what it's not what you see about you, what people see in you. Purity is superior to anything that this world can offer. Pay attention to what you are more than what you wear, more than what you drive, more than what you eat. Or more than where you live. Pay attention to what you are than what you wear. <laughs> than what you drive. Mm. I've seen thieves drive the latest car. Yes, yes, thieves wear the latest fashion. So pay attention to what you wear. No, pay attention to what you are. Not what you wear. Not even where you live. <laughs> That's what God looks at. He looked. He said to Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? Not what he wears, where he lives. But what God is seeing is like a perfect and upright man. Pay attention to what you are. When you pay attention to what you are, it will impact what you wear. It will impact what you drive. Nemusashi gribu slade salebo sugudu yamato to you. It will impact what you We are not quick here. When I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I was paying attention to what I am. Quite a while, fellows who were driving, wearing, eating, living, big. I can't find it now. Some of them are looking for my attention. Just pay attention to what you are first. It will take care of what you drive. You know what Paul said to the church of the Corinthians in Thessalonians? First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1. For yourselves, but you know, our entrance in unto that it was not in vain. But even after we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated as you know at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. For our exhortation was not of deceit yes. Yes. or of uncleanness, nor in guy. Neither at any time used with flattery words, as you know, or a clock of covetousness. God is witness. <laughs> or of men sought with glory, neither of you, nor of others. When we might have been bodysome as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you as a nurse cherished her children. So being unfortunately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but ourselves also because you are dear unto us. Any minister of the gospel that, that is hunting after any other thing other than you are dear unto us. Forget it. That is the criteria. My be awake, our be awake here. To dear unto us. 
For you remember, brethren, our labor and travel for, for laboring day and night. That we might not be chargeable unto you for anything. Preaching the gospel of God. Yes, sir. Ye are witnesses, God also. How holily and justly and unbelievably we behave ourselves among you that believe. So any servant of God that stands before you, check how holy, justly, unbelievable. These are the things you look for, nothing else. Yes, sir. Ye are witnesses. Rikuma Katalaba, ye are witnesses and God also. How holily and justly and unbelievably we behave ourselves that we will not be chargeable unto you for anything. We will be the gospel of God. You know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father taught his children that we will walk worthy of God who has chosen you. To be in his kingdom and glory. Oh, Jesus. That's a minister. That's a minister. Holy, justly, unbelievable. So it deals with every child of God. So anything that threatens your sanctification, threatens your Christian adventure. Yes, sir. So also, be a reflection of that holy, justly with your customers. You know, you are, it's not something that you know how we exalted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father taught his children that you might walk worthy of God. Who has called you unto his kingdom and glory? It's all about working worthy. It's all about working. Nothing makes you worthy apart from sanctification, sir. Holy tight. Why? Because you are a stranger in this world. Nothing is forever here. I beg. You know why? It's amazing how things come in and go out out of fashion. Music, fashion, technology. That you know you can't hear them again. In every game, they have become X, X, X. We live in an ever changing world. The one thing that doesn't change sir, is God and His word. Don't be satisfied with anything less than God and his word. <laughs> it's amazing how quickly things come in and go out. Music, the one you are celebrating, you just see it has phased out to Fashion, personalities, technology. We live in an ever changing world. Constantly changing, sir. So it's wisdom to stick to what doesn't change God's word and God. So don't be satisfied with anything less than God and His word. Only the one who made you knows how to run your life. And he has given you his manual, his word for running your life. <laughs> Sir, if you are not running your life with God's word, it will end up a wreck. Yes, so that's why we say in, in Woga, you are word made. And let's see if you can stand. And stand for. When I was running my life with God's word at the beginning, quite a number of my friends were laughing at me. But 90% of them are in the grave now. Don't be satisfied with anything. Be fashionable. Listen to music. Do everything, but don't be satisfied with anything less than God and his word. 
the word of God sanctifies. He said, bodily exercise profited me too. But godliness is profitable unto all things. Having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Godliness is an exercise. It says, exercise thyself unto godliness. So it is your personal responsibility. It's not a gift. Refuse old wise fables, profane and old wise fables, and exercise thyself unto godliness. Exercise thyself unto godliness. Godliness is an exercise, Daniel. Nobody can do it for you. No one qualifies for Olympic level of competition without commitment to paying the price of rigorous daily training, true or false. Not even in your national competition. A commitment to pay the price for rigorous daily training is a requirement for every athlete. So that's why the Bible says, uh, exercise thyself unto godliness. That means the same way, give total commitment like any young athlete will commit himself uh, to make news in winning medals. So also, exercise thyself unto, so it's hard work. Godliness. It's not for the lazy. It's exercise. What is exercise? Training. What is training? Diligent effort. What is diligent effort? Persevering. What is persevering? Enduring. Ah, you need these times to wake you up. That's why I say, awake unto righteousness. It's not for the sleepy person. Awake to righteousness and sin not. <laughs> there is no athlete that sleeps. Even in my sleep, I'm awake. <laughs> to attack sin. Awake to righteousness. No one qualifies to the level of Olympics without a commitment to pay the price for rigorous daily training. I call it daily. And so Paul said, I die daily. You don't come here to get something and go, you know, this is the place where you are made. And it is your responsibility. Sir, not even your talent, no athlete, no matter how much of natural ability that is endowed with, that will be qualified for any race without a coach who holds the highest standard of excellence for him and sees and corrects every minor fault. That's why you have the Holy Spirit. Wake up. Wake up. The Holy Spirit is your skillful, masterful trainer and teacher. And his tool is God's word. Bakulata kare baguta. Titus 1.1. And Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, to the acknowledging of the truth, which is after what? Godliness. So what? Many people don't know why God has given the Holy Spirit. I will tell you. Aside from speaking in tongues and other things, this is his primary assignment to every believer. He unveils the truth, the knowledge of the truth to lead you to godliness. It is the knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness. And that's his ministry. He opens your eyes to see and then he leads you. He is the, the truth, which is the word of God. And he's the spirit of truth. So if the Holy Ghost is leading you, sir, and you arrive at sin, it's not the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Acknowledging of the truth. After what? When the Holy Ghost is leading you, he's revealing spiritual truth to you. The ultimate goal is godliness. Wherever you end, 
So watch any person who is leading you by the revelation of the truth and is living in sin. Forget it. It's not true. Godliness is the objective of every leading. So you see somebody say, I just received a, a revelation that I should, I should disconnect from my wife and marry somebody. You know it's not so. It's not the body. No matter the tattoo he's carrying, that he's seeing another person, it's not so. It's the acknowledgement you do after God. <laughs> When the Holy Spirit unveils spiritual truth, it will lead to his after godliness. Whoever is leading you to anywhere, no matter the tattoo he carries, if the end is not godliness, and you are still following, you are a fool. Titus 1 1. Peter, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after what? So every revelation of the knowledge of the truth that does not lead to godliness personally in your life reject it when you are walking and you go through the pages of scriptures and you receive a revelation and then the end there is no godliness decide We have academic knowledge of biblical facts. You read the Bible without the help of the Holy Spirit. That means you are just academic knowledge of biblical facts. Bishrasnegrus. <laughs> we have. He taught me this last night. That I can't miss it. It's possible to go through this book alone. And the end is academic of biblical facts. That's why you can now get the distance of Galilee to Nazareth. You know the distance. Academic knowledge. Mary is the mother of Jesus. Academic knowledge. <laughs> Joseph, the carpenter. Academic knowledge of Bible cool facts. Oh, Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was 30, 30 and 5 years old when he reigned. And he began to reign when he was 20 and 5 years in Jerusalem. That's academic knowledge of Bible cool facts. And his mother's name is, was Azuba, <laughs> the, the, daughter, the daughter of Shilhai. That's academic knowledge of Bible cool facts. <laughs> and then, and then what that produces is spiritual pride. So they stand and they begin to talk. And then they begin to clap. Stand to your feet. And then they go. Academic knowledge of biblical facts. Too many. That's why sons argue with their fathers. They are full of academic knowledge of biblical facts. You know, spiritual knowledge, listen to this carefully. Spiritual knowledge of the truth humbles. While academic knowledge of biblical facts engenders pride. So when you see sons again, it's so, it's not so. Academic knowledge of Bible facts. When Rema comes, it humbles you. That's 
That's why they argue and you follow them on YouTube. Yes, sir. They can cite when they are vast and you begin to wonder. And they fight their fathers. And then the fathers are humble. Mm. Mm. They are spirit led. Yes, sir. And they care for them to celebrate them. Yes. They call them to come and showcase. And they shiver. Before you open your mouth, they know everything. Everything. You shall know the truth by the spirit of truth. That's why somebody like Paul who saw revelation was humbled. The least of all sins. Access. Why? Because uh, spiritual truth will always humble you. Learning spiritual truth goes with deep humility and total dependence on the Holy Ghost. Period. I'm on a Learning spiritual fruit goes with deep humility and total dependence on the Holy Ghost. So when the Bible says knowledge perfect, it's not talking about spiritual knowledge. It's talking about academic knowledge of biblical fact. It puffs. So it's, you, you better gauge your spiritual life so that by the time you begin to exercise prayer, there is not the Holy Ghost. They are eager to share what they know. But those who are led by the Spirit, they wait, they even fear. So what will I even say? Until he shows, they don't know anything to say. Fear the Lord. Him shall he teach. So it's no wonder you boss it. Let him hear me. Or every blast will you. This week, as you assume the state of humility, what you couldn't do many years shall be given to you with ease. That's why you see our fathers, they just do things with ease. I don't have might for anything. If he doesn't show me, I won't pretend that he has shown me. Here. At six, I, will, I will hit 62 in October. What am I looking for? I'm a stranger on the earth. I'm just showing you the commandment he's showing. <laughs> Big deal. So I want you to go for spiritual truth. You can stuff your academic knowledge, don't mind, but they're allowing to unveil to you. <laughs> <laughs> Lift up your hands to heaven. Lord, for every hand lifted here, we ask for spiritual guidance. You will lead everyone here, Lord, this week to where their possessions are. Amen. No more struggle. Every planting of the enemy is removing your life. Amen. You will return here ten times taller, Amen. better, Amen. mightier, Amen. finer Amen. by the revelation of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's a new day for you. Amen. This teaching continues on Thursday. Don't be a religious person. Sunday, Sunday. We are running a program here. Life charging, changing. I'm just enjoying spiritual revelation of truth by the Holy Ghost. Your hands are blessed. Amen. What you couldn't do this last week, it will be done supernaturally. Amen. You will be the first to share your testimony. Amen. It's a new day for you. Amen. The work of your hand is blessed. Amen. Your going out is blessed. Amen. Pay attention to what you are. You take care of what you eat, where you live, what you wear, and what you drive. It's a new day for you.
you are here this morning, you are not born again, wherever you are, I would like you to put your right hand on your chest and say these words after me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I come to you today. Save me. I believe in my heart that you died for me. And on the third day you rose from the dead. Come into my life and write my name in the book of life. I am born again. You know, when light comes, it doesn't argue with darkness. True or false? So when you see people argue, you argue about scriptures, I mean, there is no light. No light. Uh, there is no doubt about God. So it comes, you know, everybody, yeah, that's academic work, knowledge of Bible, engenders, not just pride, contention, argument. So wherever you see argument, you know what it is now. I told you, who guy is a lighted joint. It's a new day for you. Jesus never argued with any person. He just, because he's light himself. Big time. You are blessed. I know you are blessed. The whole world will know you are blessed. It's a new day. You're going out and you're coming in his place. And so shall it be. Shall we share the goodness? Without him.